Hey, good morning, it's Dr. James. I do hope and pray this message finds you and your loved ones peaceful, thriving and well. So this morning's message is gonna require a lot of courage from you and from me. And it's based on a study I shared with you a few months ago about telomeres. Remember the telomeres, the beautiful little bumpers that protect the DNA? And if uh, we're not living so well and we've got a lot of kind of stuff that we're challenged by with our self-care, our mental and emotional well-being, and just how we navigate the planet, how it can really, really shorten the telomeres. And in that, shorten our life, increase our risk for a lot of scary diseases. And at the same time, we just feel awful. We're just not living up to the potential that's inside of all of us. So I wanna share with you something because many of you commented on that. And you're like, oh my gosh, I can, I can do the diet pretty good. I'm pretty good at taking walks out in the woods and doing my exercise. But one thing that you shared with me, James, that I'm really struggling with is the whole idea of personal hostility. In that study, they talked about how anytime that we use that voice that's critical, that's fault-finding, that's diminishing of ourselves, it significantly directly impacts the health of our telomeres. So fascinating, right? It's like our self-talk can either buoy us up and really affect our telomeres and our longevity and our disease prevention. But if we have that critical voice inside of us, that hostile, pessimistic voice, that doesn't give us the space of grace that all of us, every single one of us deserve and need, it can really, really be challenging. So a lot of you said, oh my gosh, okay, is there any practice that you've been using, James? Because I know about your history when you were a younger person, the struggles you had with addiction and some of the family history stuff. So in that, my self-esteem, my self-confidence and uh, my self-judgment and my self-critiquing were masterful. I was so good at making sure I never felt like I measured up. That was the voice that was inside of me so much of my childhood, into my teens, into my early 20s. And I wanna share with you the most simple and powerful practice that is not like, I want people to go, oh my gosh, that's a miracle, but I promise it will be miraculous over time. And it's simply when that voice comes up and you're doing something and you're, you're ready to kind of find fault, you're ready to be harmful towards your psyche, you're ready to pick something up on your spirit and say, you know what? you're not good enough, who do you think you are? All of that inner dialogue, how can we help ourselves to neutralize it? How can we help ourselves to heal it? And I can share this with you because I have really learned, oh my gosh, the power of forgiveness and self-compassion and self-awareness to realize when it's happening, when it becomes something you're so good at, you're so used to doing it, one of the hardest things, even being aware that it's happening, so what I trained myself to do is when I started to feel like I was dimming my light to make myself more comfortable with my history, the part of myself that I didn't like so much, the part of myself that I, I struggled with, but I was so good at it, I just used to bring in that voice and challenge myself and find fault in myself. Here's what I do. When that voice comes up, because every now and then, that voice absolutely still finds its way inside of me and wants to come out through me. I simply say, who's talking to you? Whose voice is that? And is that voice the truth of who you are? <clears throat> Whose voice is that? Who's saying that? And is that voice the truth of who you are? Those three questions. Whew, I can't even tell you how much that has helped me to move beyond that history where it was so easy to keep me in that small box, the penalty box, so easy to continually find fault, so easy to keep me from really expressing the truth of who I knew I was. But I was so scared, so lacking in confidence, so lacking in my conviction, so lacking in my courage to fully let that come through me. Oh my gosh, when I started asking those three questions, there was this level of like exhale, healing, softening, aliveness, beautiful. So simple, so powerful, so beautiful. So let us remember that the telomeres are a very, very spiritual organism. They listen to everything that we say. They look at our life and how we decorate it. They look at the way that we spend time with certain types of people. Either bring out our light, help us to broadcast that purpose, or do they, the people, do we, we will ourselves into kind of coming down, holding in, keeping ourselves from being all that we came here to be. The beauty of self-awareness is simply that, being aware of our beauty and not allowing anything 
or anyone, including ourselves, to take it from us, to keep it from us, to stop being us. So I hope this is helpful to you. Oh my goodness, what a great time to be alive. What a great time to ask yourself those three questions and do it with a level of passion, personness, and courage that you make yourself feel so worthy because you are. Much love, all blessings. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.